science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Together, they're known as STEM, and its importance to our children is becoming more and more monumental. Thanks for joining us on Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Ken Ackerman. Joining us is Dr. Dietrich Steinmetz. He is the dean here at the Science and Engineering Division at Portland Community College. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, STEM, is it a relatively new acronym or something we've been hearing about for years and years? It's generally credited as having been coined back in 2001. It's been around for a while. And uh, the emphasis really is on integration of the elements of STEM, the science, the tech, engineering, and the math. And increasingly, we're trying to message to our students and parents that it's not just about mathematics and engineering uh, in isolation, uh, but really bringing an interest that students have uh, in the arts, in communications, um, and in a variety of other disciplines that really motivate those students internally. To the mass, is science and engineering, is that a course that really engages them or do you have to change the culture of it to engage more kids? Well, I think the message has been imperfect in the past. If the old message was uh, that we needed independent workers in mathematics and engineering, uh, the new message is really that we need creative problem solvers. We need people who are STEM, who have a very high level of STEM literacy. Uh, and of course, we'll always have a need for the independent workers in mathematics and engineering, uh, but we have a, a much larger need, and our employers here in the Northwest have a much larger need for in, f folks who are very uh, STEM literate. In the current curriculum in our high schools, are we creating the independent thinker? Are, are we designed to do that? I think the high schools are rapidly transforming. Uh, we see examples in Portland, for example, where entire schools cultures are shifting. Uh, there's a group in Portland called the Portland Metro STEM Hub, one of six hubs in Oregon that have been funded by the Oregon Education Investment Board. And their program is from the ground up with the support of teachers and uh, the principals in the high school to integrate STEM education into the arts and communication and a variety of other classes. So it's not about individual course mm -hmm. changes, but really about changing the culture from the ground up. Something Portland Community College offers is helping kids not only at the college level, but at the high school level. It's called Makerspace. And kids come in, work with professors on their own ideas, and create. Right, so our Makerspace is one of many throughout the country. Uh, just a few days ago, there was a Maker Fair at the White House in Washington, D.C. Our Makerspace is a place where students can bring their own uh, questions and problems. They're, the goal for the students in that space is to work with faculty to imagine a solution to a, a problem that would have a, and a solution that would have a social impact. Uh, to prototype their solution mm -hmm. after they design it, and then to iterate that process, to repeat it, to try to improve the solution every step along the way. Now tell me about the student that came up with this hand that we are seeing on the desk right now. So what's significant about the hand here is that the individual student came to us uh, with an interest in customizing the hand. The student was especially interested in creating a prosthesis that would fit his limb that fit him very precisely. And with it, to make it, you used this. Correct, we used a handheld 3D scanner so we could have a very precise uh, image of his limb. We used a 3D printer in order to print this from ground up. And what's exciting about the Makerspace is that the student can work with his team and faculty to make improvements and create this again for $10. This cost $10, his regular prosthesis $10,000, so this would be used when there's a chance of maybe damaging the other. Right, so the student would feel more comfortable using this in situations where he may uh, fear damaging his right. more expensive right. prosthesis. Dr. Steinmetz, thank you very much for joining us, and we want to thank you for being here as well on Comcast Newsmakers. From the campus of Portland Community College, Sylvania, I'm Ken Ackerman. Make it a great day.